it's a beautiful March day out today and the project I'm going to start working on is a uh, coat rack for the entryway and for this coat rack I've got some uh, railroad spikes that Tanner had picked up and I thought they might make a interesting rustic kind of a look to the coat rack so I've got four of them which I think it sounds about the right number and uh, it will probably be uh, several days of fiddling around with this to get it done but uh, today we're going to get started. picked up some scrap material that uh, I want to use to uh, make a jig so I can get this thing cut uniform length and figure out what angle I want. And to do that, um, I thought what I would do is just kind of set one of these against a piece that would represent the mount for them and just kind of see what kind of length I want and um, what kind of angle I might want. And uh, so I, I think this is just something to eyeball. And uh, I have done something, I think, I'm going to put the uh, more hook end of the spike up. And I just want a slight angle on it. And I'll maybe do something right about like this. And I'm also going to kind of, let's see what the angle would be. Something about like this I think looks good. So I'll just copy that onto the miter saw. Okay, so the angle that I want is really close to 15 degrees. So I'm just going to cut a chunk of this out at 15 degrees. So let's take a look at how this is going to work out. So I think what I'm going to do is, um, let's see, I've got this one marked where I'd like to have it cut. And so the length of it, let's see, we ran about here. And I also have a little stop that I want to put on the back of it here, so I cut a strip out of quarter inch plywood. So I think what I'm going to do next is kind of make a little relief for the back of the spike since these things aren't really that uniform. So we'll go trim that off. Okay. And let's kind of hold those together and See how it fits with a spike. The spike is pushed all the way to the back on that one. Kind of like the way that's looking. In the front of it. We'll do like this. And I think that'll give us a uh, pretty good grip on the spikes. And let's do some assembly. Go grab the glue. Okay. And let's see how we're going to put this together. About like that. Okay, and now over to the saw at three and a half inches. So pull that out. And that'll fit 
show me how I'm going to uh, trim it off the bandsaw. So, looks pretty good. Okay, now we'll use the bandsaw in this little fixture to cut these railroad spikes to length. So we'll just hold that back up against our backstop and cut these a little extra long, maybe Now I'll use a mill to uh, cut these things off to a uniform angle and uniform length. Same picture that we used in the band so. Okay, so we're going to find the center of this spike, and uh, we're not doing an edge finder because it is just a coat rack after all. We just need to be just need to be close. So we're going to drill and tap for a 1024 screw. So first thing we want to do is see what bit we need, and I see that for a 1024 we need a number 25, and find number 25 bit and get the camera on it it's right there it's a 1495 so we'll grab one of those All right, last one. Now to the sandblaster. I'm out at a local lumber supply looking for a piece of hickory that I can use for the back of the coat rack. And as you can see, they've got a lot of material available. And uh, looking at the hickory section and the four-quarter supply, uh, they're pretty big chunks of hickory, way more than I need. I need like 22 inches. So off the scrap bin, and sure enough, there's like three pieces of hickory that'll work. A little thick, but uh, I can turn them down. And uh, they're just about exact size that I need.
Now we have the mounting plate that we're going to uh, mount our railroad spikes to for the uh, coat rack. And I want this to be uh, standard off, I want it to be stood off from the wall a little bit, give kind of a shadow line, make it look kind of like it's floating. And all I've got left uh, on hickory is the uh, scrap that I used to get this down to thickness and a little piece on the end. So my next step is going to be to flatten out this piece and um, cut it to the size that I want and then take its scrap, laminate it on, and uh, then probably the same with this one until I get something that gets to the thickness that I want for the backing plate. And this is just what looks good to me, so there's no real science to it. It's just approximate width for a good shadow line and a good mounting plate for the wall. So, and then, that's what I'm going to go with. The next thing I want to look at is what I want for spacing for the spike coat hooks themselves. And again, this is just kind of an eyeball thing, what I think looks good to me. So, Kind of like that. So there's my center line of the hook, and there's where the top of the spike sits. So let's see what our dimension is here. So we're at two and three quarters. Okay, so we got the holes drilled now, and it's time to just test fit the spikes for the coat rack. And that's pretty much what it's going to look like. 
Next thing, the uh, little spacer piece, uh, the back to the back plate has been sitting now for several hours, so it is to the point that we can take it out of the clamps and begin to cut it down to size. Okay, so now we'll square off one end of this. And now we'll decide what length it should be. So good. Just to get an eyeball decision. That should do it. I kind of like it. I think for now I'm going to go with that. Next thing I want to do is round off the corners on here so it mimics the shape there. Okay, so this is the spacer that would go up against the wall, and then this is the coat rack plate. Got the spikes off of it now, and those are the mounting hooks, so it'll go like this, and down, and that'll hold it up on the wall. And 
Here's a spike. Like so. Okay, it's time to put some finish on this hickory. And a small project, so I'm just going to brush it on. I'll probably spray it on the last. And I'm using a uh, water-based poly because it uh, doesn't cause the wood to become an amber color. Stays pretty true. This is just a spacer, so it really only needs finish on the edges. The spikes have a great rust patina on them, but that rust could come off onto somebody's coat. So here Tanner is taking the railroad spikes and he's running them through a wire brush to take off any of the rust scaling and uh, then touching them to the grinder if necessary to pick up anything that could snag a coat. And the idea is to uh, put a powder coat on these things that looks like rust, but that is clean and smooth and uh, won't, won't harm anybody's coat. coat. Here Tanner is putting some uh, hanging wire on the spikes and that's needed in order to hang them into the uh, powder coating bay and hang them in the oven for preheating and then for the final bake of the powder. The spikes just came out of the oven in the preheat cycle and now he's going to hang them, let them cool down to a temperature where he can apply the powder. Now everything is set, he's got the powder loaded in the powder gun and uh, it's going to start applying the powder. Now the spikes go into the oven for a cure. It takes about 10 minutes for these. The cure temperature and cycle time varies a little bit between different powders. They're done. Then we'll take them out of the oven, hang them up, let them cool down a little bit, and they'll be ready to go. Well, the spikes are powder coated now, and uh, the base, of course, is done. And we're we'll trying to put it together and uh, take it inside and mount it to the wall. So, let's get started.
Okay, let's head inside. Well, I've already marked where I want this installed in pre-drilled holes. I've got uh, one stud that I've hit and uh, two wall anchors to stabilize it. So, let's get it put up.